So I'm part of the Ohio Patriot Guard, which is primarily a motorcycle group that honors veterans and first responders after they have passed. Some of the, the people in this organization knew that I was a Christian, and from time to time at our missions, they would ask me to open up in prayer for the mission that we were about to go on. During this, uh, on, on about three of the missions, there was this gentleman that was present uh, that I really didn't know, didn't interact with him too much, a uh, little bit, and uh, he heard me open in prayer on each one of those missions. So um, fast, fast forward, and I get a phone call from his best friend last month who told me that uh, this gentleman was going into hospice and that he was dying of cancer and that he was requesting me to officiate his funeral. And I'll be honest, my, my knee-jerk reaction was uh, not me. I mean, I'm not a pastor. I, I don't know this person. Um, you know, what am I going to say? So my, my knee-jerk was to say no. Um, but, you know, then I kind of got convicted a little bit, you know, that how, how could I, I say no to this man's dying wish if he was wanting me to handle this? Um, I did ask, we do have a pastor in our group, and I, and I actually asked his friend, I said, are you sure he's not getting me mixed up with uh, Bob? And he assured me, no, he is um, specifically asking for you. So I, I was really stressed out um, over embarking on this. Um, and I had gone away, I uh, was leaving out of town for a week-long trip, and I had set up that the day after I returned, I was supposed to meet this person, and we were going to have some, some deep discussion on where he stood in his faith. I was hoping to learn a little bit about him and the kind of person he was, you know, that that would help me as I tried to prepare the message. Um, I sought counsel from several of the pastors in our church, and uh, a lot of counsel from my wife, Jamie, as well. So um, the day before I was coming home from the trip, I got the phone call that this gentleman had passed. So I was, you know, really uh, in a, you know, in kind of a funk because I really didn't know how I was going to handle this now. I didn't know if he was saved. I didn't know his, his story. Um, so it's really, you know, starting to stress on me a little bit. And plus, now I knew I only had five days to prepare before his funeral service. So as I sat down to uh, start to think about the message, I was, you know, I had nothing. I mean, I was, I was really uh, at my wit's end. And then it occurred to me that I forgot to open up in prayer before I sat down to write this message because this wasn't this wasn't me this was I needed God to work through me because I'm certainly not prepared for this uh, or you know in my mind qualified for it so I sat down and prayed and then grabbed the pen and it was amazing it was literally after I prayed and, and grabbed my pen that uh, God just started providing me everything I needed to know through Facebook posts I, I found that uh, he was a believer um, that he did accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Uh, through uh, more posts and some discussion with family and friends, I learned about the kind of man he was. Um, so it, it really helped me to, um, you know, put my message together. Um, so I, I, I gave the message, and it, it was well, well received. His, uh, his girlfriend of eight years told me, you know, that it was exactly what she was hoping and that Grady had told her he was hoping it would be. Um, but during this, they were videoing the uh, service. And I was a little nervous because, I mean, this is the first time I've ever done this. I've never officiated a, a, a funeral. And so I was nervous that any mistake that I made um, was going to be on tape forever. So I was kind of wishing that that wasn't taped. Well, fast forward to yesterday. And I saw a uh, post from the woman, uh, the, the girlfriend of the deceased, that her lifelong friend, who was not able to make the service, watched the video of the service that they took. And she was so convicted by the message uh, that God had provided me that she became convicted and accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. So to me, it just goes, you know, uh, just a reinforcement of, um, you know, when you're 
feeling inadequate, um, you know, you, you just you need to go to God. He, he's going to call you in situations which your knee jerk, like me, is going to say no. Um, but there's a reason that He's calling you. There's a reason why He's tugging on you. So lean into God, pray to God for direction, and share your testimony with those around you.